Another interesting phenomenon that we can see here in this, this little weedy plant in this patch of dirt is that you have a, a symbiosis between the aphids and some ants that are tending them. And sometimes with invasive species, we can find them working together. There's a mutualistic relationship where the ants take care of the aphids and defend them from predators. And in return, the aphids provide sugary food for the ants. Aphids are important because we keep on finding new records of them. A lot of the aphids that we have in the country um, are highly specific on a small range of hosts. We have in peri-urban environments or in urban environments, most of the plants associated with people are from North American or European origins. There's a range of aphids that don't care too much, that can get on a wide range of hosts. They came here, they were the first aphid invaders, they're the ones that came here the quickest. But we keep on finding records of new aphids that are turning up on explicit um, hosts that we didn't think were there, that we didn't know. So, that need publication because they're not recorded from Australia but we found them as part of our surveillance activities. But things, <laughs> things like this, like the, the, the aphids and things like the elm leaf beetle, they may not be an economic threat because elm trees or poplars mm. aren't necessarily something that we grow for a lot of revenue in this country, but they help us figure out what different invasion pathways are possible. And that gives us a way to look at potential introductions for other way more yeah, economically right. damaging yeah. species. These aphids here, these little black bl blobs in the middle of the slide, uh, uh, a new, new genus of aphid found that infests um, only faba beans. Mm. Uh, we grow a lot of faba beans uh, recorded from a backyard in Sydney. We haven't yet got out to areas where they have la large scale production of, of faba beans. Um, and it's found commonly throughout, basically from Russia right through to Europe and we've only just recorded that from Sydney. But this means we're ready when a farmer sends in, what's this aphid on my bra beans? I've never seen these here that's before. Right. We'll be ready to say, mm, oh, we right. know exactly what that is, where it's from, and now we can look at the literature from that country to see how they control it there. Please. It's worth pointing out that they can reproduce clonally, so yeah. or parthenogenetically. So a female can just give birth to live young that come directly out that without having mated before, and she can just produce baby after baby after baby, and each of those grows up and produces more clonal offspring and so it's possible for their populations to just explode. That's correct but the amazing thing about that is it allows them to exploit their resources and this is where it gets in you get one aphid into a crop and very quickly as science has just explained they can fill the crop but they they suffer a lot of their um, sexual development is also to do with um, other pressures the, the time of the year uh, and also the density which they're in. If they find that they're competing with lots of other of their sisters, there's intense pressure to go off and find new, uh, new fresh virgin crops that they can infest. So there's an ecological parameter about suddenly producing wing forms because aphids can come in wingless and winged forms and so they form wings and they can fly away to and, and look for new, for new crops. Um, so it's a way of relieving the pressure if, if you find um, aphids on a plant near your school or your home or your garden, you often notice that there are other insects around them at all times. Some of those are predators of the aphids and some of those are beneficial insects who do beneficial of the aphids who take care of them or farm them. Ants, for example, will often tend aphids like a herd of little cows. You'll see them tending aphids, scale insects, mealybugs, and other similar insects that feed on the fluids from plants. And as they're sucking that fluid that comes through the plant, they are essentially taking up a whole bunch of extra sugar that they don't even need from the sap. That comes out the back of the aphid, and that's a delicious treat for the ants. So in return for getting this sugary treat, the ants will defend the aphids and similar insects from their predators, such as beetles or mm. lace wings or parasitoid wasps. So the other part of that ecology that is a bunch of parasites that get in there, and aphids particularly are good because they have um, it's really easy to see parasitized ones. They're frequently called mummies, and that's uh, uh, a throwback to the Egyptian mm. sort of thing that the, the funny little black or green aphid suddenly blows up into this big rounded lump, and it's got a little wasp inside of it. And you can see them fairly regularly, and they suddenly don't move, they just become a, a, a sort of a dull brownish lump. And you can tell the parasitized ones. So that's a really easy, observable mm. thing by. By, by children to be able yeah. to see that ecology. And there's a whole uh, number of genera of wasps that are exclusively 
just we go for aphids and nothing other mm -hmm. than aphids. So and you'll see them when they get in there. You'll often see little wasps going around stinging the mm -hmm. aphids as and well. They're they in their larvae. They, in the, they, they mm -hmm. insert the egg in there or the, or, or the larvae and it grows up and it yep. just basically kills the thing and it eventually eats its way out of the yeah. little mummy and then it's just left as a little skeleton there that was the right. little cage for yeah. the for for the wasp to grow grow around. But you said they're tiny, tiny little wasps and they're fairly often when you find a colony of aphids, you don't just get one or two. You get hundreds yeah. of them, they're totally infesting it. And you'll see all these little guy, little wasps going around. Just and the aphids are pretty dumb. <laughs> they just sit there feeding and yeah. doing what they're doing. They're getting stung. My personal favorite part of this, since you mentioned the parasitoid wasps, is the fact that in this whole incredible ecosystem of all these different species that defend the aphids, not only are there the parasitoid wasps that oviposit into the aphid and their young grows up inside that, there are hyperparasitoid mm. wasps that oviposit into the parasitoid wasp larva inside the aphid. And so it's a wasp in a wasp in an aphid. And <laughs> these have been described up to, wait for it, I think 17th degree hyperparasitoids. So it's like a Russian nesting doll of yeah. wasp, 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 wasp,